All right, hello. This video is going to talk about the barriers to entry in the music industry. And uh, mostly, uh, I will say the barriers are probably lowering with the fact that we have technology, computers, um, software, digital audio workstations, uh, the ability to make home studios and do all of that. Um, and the internet, just the internet in general, I think is lowering the barrier to entry for new uh, startup artists, artists who are just beginning, um, and labels that are starting out, new brand new labels, uh, the barriers to entry in the music industry are definitely kind of uh, uh, lowering, and that could be good or bad depending on where you are in the industry. If you're new, that's obviously very good. If you're established from the past, like you got your you got your startup going in the '70s and the '80s, and you're still kind of in it now. Um, it's probably at this point it doesn't really matter you know but you have to adapt your business to the fact that we have the internet now and everything so your business structure and your business uh, model your modeling for your business will be different now than it was back in the day with uh, you know a lot of physical stuff a lot of analog controllers a lot of hands-on kind of things nowadays everything's kind of virtual and done uh, virtually through software and through internet websites and and files so there's a lot of like mp3 files wave files and all that but anyway let's get started all right barriers to entry so um like i said it is easier today uh, than it was in the past i think for getting started uh there are so many resources and tools available for new artists and new labels to get started that it's unbelievable you can have you can have your music up and online ready to go uh, the same day you recorded it, you know, before you had to manufacture CDs or manufacture records and do the whole manufacturing process to get the actual product built and then shipped out to your fan base. But nowadays it's just uh, same day, you know, you upload it and the song is there ready to go. Um, home studios are developing all over the place. You can, you can get quality recordings and quality mixes created through home studios that you really couldn't do be before you had to, before you had to go to an actual studio that charged an arm and a leg to record you for an hour or two hours or three hours. And they would charge you an arm and a leg. You would lose a lot of money, um, just to get your song recorded by quote unquote professionals that work in these studios. Nowadays, you can do it all yourself. Of course, you have to learn, you know, um, and learning, there's a there's a cost to learning, you know, so instead of actually selling a product or making a product, you have to spend the time to learn uh, how to run a home studio, which takes, it takes some time to figure it all out. But I have videos that teach like home studio stuff, so you can learn that. Um, yeah, and there's there's fewer tangible products like CDs and uh you know records and and cassette tapes and all that and fewer fewer mediums to even play those things i mean like I mean, these macbooks don't even have a cd slot i have a macbook here and it doesn't even have a, C a cd slot so if i had a cd i couldn't even play it on my computer i'd have to play it through an old cd player that you know it's just older technology that isn't really used anymore and cassette tapes man those things are like <laughs> they're old treasures you know they're cool and all and i love seeing cassettes and everything they have a nice sound to them nice tone but they're just so old that um it's hard to find something that plays it i think i have a cassette player over there that i can use to play cassettes but you know it, those things are getting for, getting harder and harder to find so it's harder and harder to play those those mediums of uh, of media those uh those physical tangible copies of, of media today and everything is going towards digital audio files so um that's cool and all you can easily sh you can easily get your music out there you can easily put your music into a digital audio file like an mp3 or like a wave wav whatever which is you know non-compressed you have compressed audio files and then you have lossless like uh flack is like a lossless audio file that has no loss in quality when an uh, uh, an mp3 is like a compressed version of a wave or like a flak that it loses a little bit of quality to become compressed but it saves a lot of space on your computer so you can have you can have a lot more mp3s on your system than you can have wavs or waves so uh, there, there are more of those um, digital audio files uh, basically being created um, there is a problem with that now though and uh, before you had to go and buy the cd 
um, or get a CD from a friend to actually hear the music. And uh, nowadays, though, you have to, with an audio file, you can copy and paste that file anywhere. You could, you can make copies of the same file and then distribute that that music all over the place for free. So people like pirating and uh, Pirate Bay and all that. It's kind of a problem for musicians um, because of file sharing. You know, like someone gets a hold of your song and then they just they blast it out there on the internet which is fine because it still grows your fan base and artists have to accept the fact that that happens because it does still promote your brand and it does still promote your music so it is kind of encouraged it's just you're going to lose money in the process that you could have gained through but you're still going to gain uh the exposure which is good okay um so the biggest way now for artists to make money in the industry is in fact streaming like this Spotify um, systems like that <clears throat> all right uh, the internet so it's basically leveling the playing field um, I don't know if this is spelled right but it's supposed to say oligopolistic oligopolistic competition all right so back in the day you had you had you had a few really well-known record labels that everyone competed to get on because those labels just dominated the industry. Um, that's where all the fans were. The entire fan base was just resting at the at the knees of these these record labels that dominated the industry. Um, you know, so there was a few very large labels that just blasted the industry with whatever they wanted to put, and that's how they controlled music you know music was able to um sound a certain way and popular music was popular because these record labels controlled the industry and uh there were very few of them it was an oligopoly which is very few companies running an industry which is fine you know that's cool that's just what happened um but nowadays the internet is totally leveling that playing field and it's just like a startup label from la can be almost as like well out like the exposure i mean not as well known that 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 reputation comes with time and you can never have a startup be well known instantly but just the the resources that you have as a startup are the same as like a well-known company or a well-known label Um, so you have the same resources to get your music out there that everyone else has you know you have the same marketing techniques the same the same uh exposure the same web development the same um audio uh distribution all of that um is all done the same way now um between labels so all those resources and again you have to learn them so you have to take the time to actually learn these resources but and it's all the same for every single label uh out there uh because the internet leveled that playing field um which is super cool nowadays all right so now like a startup label in la can compete against you know big time record label um you know columbia or whatever the hell whatever they are uh amoeba and, and stuff you know just cool cool labels like that but you know to each their own and uh good content is always going to grow your fan base the most which is what you want to do one sec i want to test this real quick all right cool i thought my mic shut off but it's still running Okay, um, so you the biggest key now is just you want a larger and larger fan base. You have to draw people in, all right? You have to have a cool enough show or cool enough attention-grabbing factor that people come in and want to be a part of your brand or your label or your art or your style of music. So you have to compete for, compete for a larger and larger fan base, which is really the lifeblood of your work is the fan base, um, the people that basically fuel everything that you do because um you know a popular a good well-known band is is good for that reason exactly is because they're well known and you know a lot of people know them so you have to get your your name out there as any any way you can and those ways are changing now with the internet before it was playing like gigs and gigs and gigs and just going out there and performing as much as you can in as many venues as many cities as you can and just touring constantly so people out there in the world know who you are and that's still the case today, but there's also the internet, and the internet is just like a really quick way to just blast your broadcast your your brand out there for the whole entire world, as long as you don't have them in a firewall or something, you know. Like you might you might firewall China or something, but yeah, no offense to China, um, but uh, 
yeah, you can just broadcast whatever message you want out there to the whole world to, to hear and to listen to, um, to grow your fan base. All right, so the roles in the 21st century are changing. Uh, there's a heavier demand for online stuff like web development and uh, things like that. You know, mobile phones, like people are always on their damn phones looking up information, listening to music. Like This thing can do anything. It's so impressive that we've developed this technology. Um, you know, practically anything. <laughs> so you have to have a strong online presence, I think. You have to have your own website. You have to, uh, you know, kind of understand how the internet works. And not just social media. Like, social media is nice, but there's there's so much more to the internet than just just social media, man. Like, you know, like I just think people get trapped into that. And it's just like, it's, it's like, it's like the minor leagues compared to the major leagues, you know, like you got to get out of the minor leagues and you got to, you got to jump up into the major leagues where like the real stuff really happens. So you have to have a good online presence, um, on as many things as you can, you know, like definitely use social media, but also understand how the real distribution works and how the real, uh, online promotion and marketing work and all of that, the whole business industry of it. Um, and there's also YouTube is a big one. Like I'm making a video now, you know, just teaching about the industry, teaching um, about barriers to entry. Just make videos. Um, you know, we'll be in competition with each other, but that's cool. You know, just uh, to each their own, right? Just like make videos and um, teach people. Like whatever you know, you might have some tip or trick that oh, someone else doesn't know that I don't know, or that um, your friend doesn't know, or whoever and uh you can you can teach someone that so make teaching videos get on youtube uh and you can make money even on youtube with the ad ad partnerships so you can have revenue coming in like that you can have revenue coming in um from places that are different now with the internet youtube being one your website being one with with ad revenue you can have people or pay to display their products and their services on your website or on your video um like i have ads on my videos that say you know, like we're opening up uh, some new mixing software or some, some new application you can get to enhance your mixes, um, a new plugin, a new uh, uh, new VSTs, new apps that are used in music and stuff like that just are advertised on my content um, and I get paid for that. So that's a kind of a cool thing. And, uh, you know, and music production from home is like is a new role that you don't really have to go out and spend a couple thousand bucks to record your, your tunes or your tracks in an actual real studio. You know, that's nice and all to have all the equipment there and everything. But you can do it from home for practically like a fraction of the price for for a tenth, a twentieth of the price and still have the same quality of recording or the same quality product. If you look at it that way as someone that did it in the studio. Once again, you have to learn how to do it, though. You have to understand how these software applications work, how FL Studio works, how uh, you know Cubase, Ableton, all these programs work, what they're optimized for, and uh, just roll with that. And once you understand it all, um, you know it's a lot cheaper. Your 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 cost and your expenses drop a lot, and um, so then you save money. You know you save a lot of money doing it that way. So as a wrap up, I have to say that the barriers to entry are lowering for new artists. All right, if you're just starting out as a new artist in the music industry and you want to um, kind of jump into the game quickly, you can do it now with the internet and with technology. So like, by all means, go right ahead and learn as much as you can about this industry. Um, I have videos that teach you, so check out those videos. Uh, they'll teach you FL Studio recording techniques, audio connection techniques. It's a treasure treasure chest full of information, specifically for electronic and like new kind of music. You can find everything in my, you know, on my website at epsilon144.com. Um, and you know, yeah. So the internet's leveling the field, uh, and you just have to understand that you have to use the resources that are available to you to the best of your ability to be able to compete with uh, the more well-known labels for for a fan base basically trying to grow your fan base you want people to when they want to listen to a song when they're studying or when they want to listen to your song when they're at a party when they're at a bar and they go to the touch tunes at a bar or when they're at the beach just chilling with their homies you know um and they play a song you want them to go to your music first like you want to pull them in so it's like oh I want to play the new Epsilon 144 song, or I want to play the new, the new Angel song, or I want to play the new uh, uh, whoever song, you know, um, Pixel Lord or whoever, you know, like I'm going to play the new Pixel Lord tune and shit. 
and uh, you want them to do that so you have to understand I don't know what I was saying but you have to understand like uh, how to how to grow your fan base I guess you need a bigger fan base so you got to get your name out there and I think the internet is a big one nowadays that you have to you have to hustle on you know um, you have to hustle on the internet and, and in real life too like you know and with real life you have to go out there and do shows and gigs and networking with artists and stuff but um yeah and then the, the new rules just like there are new rules involved in the industry home studios and all that so uh understand all of that information i hope it was good and helpful um your fan base is key though so you want to try to get a bigger fan base and that's most important um and don't just really like spam people because spamming is like it's good to just send it send that out there but the problem is the person that gets it, you know, is probably going to, uh, like, relent, not relentlessly, but what's the word? They're going to, um, they'll, they'll click through and look at it, but they're going to feel forced to, you know, like, they're not going to willingly want to look at it. They're just like, ah, okay, fine. Like, I'll look at it. And if the content isn't good, you lost them basically forever. So that possible fan is now very hard to get them back. Imagine, like, a Mormon coming to your door, you know, like you see the guy from down the street, you don't really want to pull, you don't really want to talk to the guy, and he comes to your door, you know, and you just don't want to open the door, but you do anyway, just to be nice, and you talk to him, and then he, like, it turns out to be a salesman selling you like AT&T or some shit, like some fiber optic cable, and you just go like, no, I don't, I don't want it, like you're forcing this on me, and I don't want that, so um, it makes them uncomfortable, and it makes them very, very and now they always have that in their mind that when they hear your brand your brand's associated with like something that is you know spammy and you can't really associate your brand with that so you have to draw them in with a good quality product a good quality song and then when they find it they're like super happy that they discovered you and then they show your friends their friends like oh man i found this awesome new artist check it out you know and then it spreads out that way just natural natural um you know organic growth or whatever so grow your fan base is very important that's key to a success in today's technological era i have heartburn i'm gonna oh man. kind of but all right yeah so uh if you have any questions about this video you can ask me in the comments or on my website epsilon144.com i hope that was helpful in uh teaching you about the barriers to entry for the music industry take care peace out how do I get out of this?